Hey, hey, hello, I'm Kiwakan, also known as Chorus Cornix, and welcome to Jack, yet another Crowcast where I pick a game I played for a week and then I talk about it. This week's game is The Lost Campfire for the PS4 and 5. It was released in 2020 and it's a puzzle adventure game developed by Hello Games and also published by them. And also there will be spoilers up ahead, just so you know, but first a little backstory. So I found this game under the label Unique in the PSN store. It looked kind of interesting because the character design actually reminded me of another game that I played called Journey. So when you start up the game, you can pick a new game, options, select save, and puzzle. And if you pick a new game, you can you also have two more options. You can pick a normal playthrough or an exploratory mode. So I think the exploratory mode is just go through the game casually. So in the beginning, there are three boats heading for a fire temple or shrine. Uh, I believe these are your friends. You're following them. And they blow a horn and open up a, or activate a door, I should say. And you get distracted by a bird, and you lose your paddle in the process, and you drift down the stream, missing everything. You wake up later down the shoreline, where there are lots of other abandoned boats, and your character has now changed his color to light blue. So I believe this game is about depression, and it kind of... This game actually deals with it rather well, unlike other games I played on this podcast. So the character that you're playing as is called Amber, and you start to explore the area. And I believe Amber is a reference to a campfire, like a dying hope or something like that. So you find another dead character, and on that person is a satchel. And in that satchel is a statue that you need for a puzzle later on. So you're supposed to rotate this fire emblem, fire logo thing in order to open up a door. And also while you're playing this game, there is a female narrating voice explaining how the characters are feeling and also talking for them. And then you find yourself in a dark forest and uh, there's this puzzle where you find some fire caged well in a cage. You're supposed to do a little mini game in order to release it. So this part reminded me a bit about Epic Yarn. I guess it's the overall kind of graphic style. So way up opens forward a path into the forest and you're supposed to follow this flame that you unleashed. So the narrating voice explains that this is a place between places so you can draw the conclusion that this character you're playing is is dead. So you're here to find these other characters called Forlorn, and they're basically lost spirits or souls. And uh, I explored a bit, did some jumping on some lily pads, caught a worm, uh, helped another Forlorn with a mini game, and I found these. They're like fragments or lost pieces. So you're supposed to have 42 of them throughout the game. You find them in these small chests. So in order to progress to the next area, you need to help other Forlorn. Uh, you do this by talking to a ghost that also gives you some hints. And it's very hard to explain, but you're supposed to find seven of these Forlorn and help them out. So I found one of them by burning some roots and uh, I picked up a fish net. So this is like any type of puzzle games. You use items to progress or move the story along. I also found another Forlorn and help them by the pond area. And a bit later into the game, you help this depressed fisherman. You talk to him and he helps to mend one of your nets. So now you can fish up a key. But before you do that, you go to the... There's like in the middle of the pond, there's this lily pad. And beneath that is a giant frog. And you feed him the worm and he will take you into a cavernous area where you can help another forlorn. So I used the net to fish up the key and I used that to open up a gate. And by doing so, help another forlorn. And I realized I haven't really explained what a Forlorn is. So imagine the main character from Journey, uh, like black skin, covered in uh, some sort of robe. So the difference between Journey and these characters' design is that the uh, Forlorn basically have different colors and they're shorter. And once you helped all the seven Forlorn, you move on to the next area of the game, which is the crossroads. And here you're supposed to talk to the Forest King, which is this huge crow. And once you've done that, you get a feather from him, and now you're one of them basically, so you can move about freely in his kingdom. So the first thing that you do is you go and talk to one of the crows, you relieve him of his duty, you take the, the guard post, and uh you don't for a second stand guard, you just move on, you climb down the sledge and move on to the misty part of the game. So this area works as a sliding puzzle, so there is like islands in the mist, if that makes sense. So you collect puzzle pieces by moving the platforms, and that's also the walkway that you're walking on, if that makes sense. So by moving uh, around the puzzle pieces in the sliding part where you get the landform, and the landform is like a tool that, uh, it's basically like a magnet, so if you blow this horn, it will move the platforms around uh, on the screen. And then you do some more puzzling and you end up at the pink swamp and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's a big swamp and it's like a pig, huge pig actually, that blocks your way. So he wants things to eat because he's, uh, well, he's a fat pig. So he wants something that's sparkly, so you feed him a television of all things. And then he wants some fruit 
and then he wants a skull because he wants something crunchy to eat and then he um then he can progress basically and for the rest of the week i was just playing this game on and off and i explored and um I think I had enough of this game actually. It's kind of one of those games that is kind of chill to just sit down and play, to be honest. So gameplay. Go through this strange limbo world and help people along the way. Control, the D-pad and left sticks moves the character around. The bar in the middle of the controller is inventory. The triangle button is the lantern. The X interacts and the circle goes back in the menus. But if you hold it in gameplay, you actually run or you can tap it to dash. And the option menu brings up the menu graphics so this game was made in unity engine it's a very bright and colorful game very aesthetic sound and music paul veer was the composer and sound designer of this game uh and there was another thing i was supposed to talk about the female narrating voice was kind of annoying at the beginning of the game but the character or the narration kind of grew on me as i played more and more throughout the week easter egg seekers and glitches i managed to get on a ledge that i was not supposed to be on uh, by glitching through some geometry and it's a common thing with the unity engine especially i played other games on this podcast where if you press your character against like a corner or something you can actually manage to get yourself through that when you're not supposed to there are collision detection and stuff like that but it's not really uh that well implemented so in conclusion i wrote yes play it it's actually really good So I did some research this week, which I probably should do more often. (laughs) So this game is about depression, but unlike other games, uh, as I said before, that I played on this podcast, this game actually deals with it well. You go through the story, you help out other characters that are kind of down and depressed, and you help them get their spark back, hence the name Amber. So I can definitely recommend this game. It's very light on the puzzles, and I actually had fun playing it this week. So yeah, I can definitely recommend it. So anyway, thanks for listening and are watching and take care.